Uh, okay, so this one, I don't know if this holds up. Customers over 70 are not allowed to dine within our walls. Or nice. Any, yeah. I love that. Customers over 70, which is everyone on Long Island. The youngest person in Long Island is in their mid-60s. Everyone over 70 is not allowed to dine within our walls. How nice is that? 70-year-olds can't go to dinner anymore. Mm. Wow. 70 is not that old either. No, it's not. 70 years old, you can't go to dinner. Not within our walls. You can eat in the parking lot. You can eat in the lot. Employees will take and record contactless temperature checks as well as take health pledge daily. The health pledge. Yeah. I'm sure no one will lie about that. And by the way, what if you have a symptom of COVID? You don't have COVID. Doesn't this sound in, like it It seems like it's a lot. And by the way, if it, this is that transmissible, does any of this fucking even help? Well, maximum parties of four. Maximum parties of four. I like that. I do like that. Someone's got to go. This is going to be a renegotiation of all the risks we take in our life. People are going to be like, how much do we like these people? How much do we want to have dinner with them? How much does this couple need to be here? Do we really like that movie? Do we really like that comedian? Do we really? And I'm here to tell you what industries are going to go and what are going to stay. Right. I'm going to tell you that. Okay? Because I have a Facebook. That's my qualifications. I'm a citizen. And I'll tell you, any industry that involves me is going to stay for a little while. It's going to stay around. And I'm not, and that is a conflict of interest, but it's the truth. College is done. You fuckers that are paying 40 grand a year to learn where and when you start vomiting, what beer is too many, what your tolerance is, and sitting around listening to professors babble who have no other marketable skills except talking. Who are those people? Can you imagine? That some people, these professors, they do nothing but talk for hours. And it's the only money they make is talking. It's ridiculous. And it'll be stopped. I won't allow it. A post-COVID world will not allow these bloviating professors. Blah, blah, blah. They say anything. And, they, and, and that's all they do is just sit or stand and talk. And I am disgusted with that archetype of person. So they're going to have to get real fucking jobs and figure it out. College is done. I am sorry. It needs to be remodeled and remade into something that prepares people for actual life. It should prepare you for actually doing something. You can't spend years and years just having weird threesomes and protesting things you barely understand and you know, sitting in the library doing Adderall. It's time to come into the world. Come to the market now. See what skills you have. We got to start reforming college, and we will. A lot of colleges, struggling colleges, are not going to make it through this. This is a big scam. Um, try to ensure guests stay separate while waiting to be seated. Correct. So if one tip party four comes in, and another party of four comes in, and they might want to talk to each other because they live in the same neighborhood or know each other. Right. They can't do that. Somebody's right. going to have to come up to them and go, listen, will you two shut the fuck up? And you, here's what's hilarious about this. Do you know how inartfully this is going to be done on Long Island? Oh, right. Do you have any idea? Hey, you know you're not supposed to fucking talk. Cut the fucking talking out. Just shut the fuck up for five minutes. We're getting your table, Donna. God, we don't want to get shut down by the government. I mean, do you know how poorly this will all be executed? Long yeah. I don't, they don't make it a day with all of these regulations. There's no way this even happens in Long Island. There's no way. And there's a whole section about mental health. Oh, no, there's a whole part. section about mental health. Yeah. This is a, it is an island where. I would say on Long Island, 30% of people are mentally ill, yeah. mentally unwell. 30% of them are mentally unwell. The whole section about mental health. We've all heard it. 
If you can't take the yeah. heat, then best stay out of the kitchen. But all too often in the restaurant industry, the heat burns on longer than your shift. This mandatory pause of service has allowed us to consider what's already a global issue in house service, mental well-being. Yeah, mental well-being. <laughs> Great. It's a new world, folks. You want a bowl of spaghetti? Get ready for an episode of American Ninja Warrior to get to your table. Get ready for hurdles and foam pits and sanitizer and, you know, get ready for it. It's insane, but I don't know. I just don't know who's... I love going out to dinner. It's one of the things I specialize in. I'm very good at it. Some people aren't good at it. People, We all know the people that aren't good at it. They don't know what they're doing. They say stupid things when they sit down at a table they don't, you know, per, you know, they peruse the menu too long. They don't get it. They order the wrong thing. Take them to a steakhouse. They order breasted chicken. We know who these people are. They're just not. They're not good at going out to dinner. They haven't put the time in like I have. They've they put the time in like having a relationship or earning money, starting a family. Okay, sure, have all of that. But you get them out and you go, oh yeah, you're not fun. They don't have a good story. They don't have a quick anecdote. They don't understand that, like, they got to wrap it up before the waitress gets there. They, you know, that there's a rhythm to a dinner. There's a rhythm to a, a dinner that works well. And it's just, it's going to be completely destroyed. Completely destroyed with a lot of these guidelines that are coming in. I mean, it's just, it's just a death knell to the restaurant business as we know it. It's crazy. And I, and this is a business that I'm, I've always wanted to own a restaurant. If I didn't do this for a living, if I wasn't a comedian, I might be in that business. I don't know. Um, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably be doing some real estate scam in Southern Florida with the elderly. But I would still always enjoy restaurants. And it's sad. I can't imagine them. Unless we have a few months without a case and people are just like, fuck it, who cares? Unless there's a, a national fuck it, who cares? unless there's some type of vaccine, unless there's an antiviral drug that works. All of these things seem less likely. You know, the vaccine, the viral drug, all these things seem less likely. I'm not anti-vaccine. I just want to know what the fuck's going on. I just want to be, I just don't want to hand the world over to Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and all of these trillionaires, billionaires soon to be trillionaires, let them do whatever they want. You see this new thing on Facebook, all these boomers are sharing it and they're like, how did Bill Gates... Who's the best man that's ever lived? Who saved more lives? He saved lives of the Congo. He saved lives for polio. How did Bill Gates be turned into some villain by this? I love Bill Gates. I don't care that he wants to shoot a missile full of dust at the sun and block out the sun. Who cares? It's I hate the sun. My sis, I thought I had a melanoma last week. It turned out it wasn't. It was just a pile of dirt that collected on my body and I didn't watch it, but I thought it was cancer. I hate the sun. I don't care that Bill Gates wants to tunnel to the center of the earth and bring back the dinosaurs. He's a good boy. He's the local boy to done good. He's just, all he does is try to help people every day. After the government monopolized, they, they busted him on all these monopoly things. He went into philanthropy and decided he didn't want to, he wanted to give his money away to his charity organizations to give to, you know, schools that where his son goes. But, and, and, you know, dodge taxes all over the world by, 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 you know, by playing fucking come here with the needle and fucking whatever third world country won't kick him out. I like Bill. And I don't want to hear anything negative said about him. Not at all. It doesn't matter that he wants to send nuclear weapons to Mars and blow it up <laughs> just for fun. He understands global warming comes from the sun. Get rid of the fucking sun. Get that article up. Get Bill Gates wants to shoot dust at the sun, by the way. This is what happens when you let people get billions and trillions of dollars and then nobody's, uh, 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 you know, that's all. He just wants to shoot some dust at the sun. Here we go. What could go wrong? Could dimming the sun save the earth? Bill Gates wants to spray millions of tons of dust into the stratosphere to stop global warming. But critics fear it could trigger calamity. Fuck these critics. How dare, who are these critics? 
astronomers, scientists, who are these, have they not heard of windows? Who are these critics stopping him from shooting dust right. into the fucking, into the atmosphere? Who is saying that it's not a good idea to block out the sun? Why not let him experiment? It's fun. Why are all these conspiracy theorists, what, what's their problem? He doesn't want the sun anymore. He wants to dim the sun. This is not a crackpot plan of a garden shed inventor. The project is being funded by billionaire and Microsoft founder Bill Gates and pioneered by scientists at Harvard Epstein University. <laughs> oh, Keep going down here. Come go on for a minute. Go okay, on for a minute. Okay. In theory, the airborne dust would create a gigantic sunshade, reflecting some of the sun's rays and heat back into space, dimming those that get through, so protecting Earth from the worsening ravages of climate warming. Keep going down here. The initial $3 million test, known as the Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment, would use a high-altitude scientific balloon to raise around 2 kilograms of calcium carbonate dust the size of a bag of flour into the atmosphere 12 miles above the desert of New Mexico. This would seed a tube-shaped area of the sky about half a mile long, 100 yards in diameter. For the ensuing 24 hours, the balloon would be steered by propellers back through the artificial cloud, it's onboard sensors monitoring this dust, sun reflecting abilities, and its effect on the thin surrounding air. Okay? However, Scopex on, is on hold. This is what they're calling it, I guess. Scopex is on hold amid fears it could trigger a disastrous series of chain reactions, creating climate havoc in the form of serious droughts and hurricanes and bring death to millions of people around the world. I don't want a bad word about Bill. I, how did a man who just wants to cure disease and get rid of the sun get a bad rap on Facebook? All these yahoos are making fun of William. I love Bill. So what? He wants Americans to live underground so that the ravages of global warming don't stop them. He wants to create a slave of a slave race of lichens who have white skin because they're all albinos. They can live underground. It's nice underground. If you haven't been underground, it's lovely. Stop it. Stop telling Bill what to do. He's got billions of dollars. Let him do what he wants. That's what they go. Let him do what they want. Hey, let him do what they want. Hey, if Jeff Bezos wants to automate uh, and just destroy grocery stores and everybody will just get a drone of uh, apples dropped off, just let him do it. Let him do it. Doesn't matter that uh, millions of people are going to lose their jobs. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Let him, let him, if they can design a robot, let him do it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. We'll just let them do whatever they want. We don't want to debate the pace of which people's jobs are going to evaporate and be taken over by AI. Let them do it. Just get it. One of the Harvard team's directors, Lizzie Burns, admits, our idea is terrifying, but so is climate change. So is climate change. So I don't want to hear a bill. I don't want to hear a bad word about Bill. I can't believe you ninnies would say anything. So he knows he's up to no good, by the way. If you ever see his face, Bill Gates, by the way. He knows he's kind of up to no good. Yes, he wants to save people's lives, kind of. But let's get real here. There's, there's some other things percolating in that old dome of his. There's a lot of good with the bad. I'm sure Jeffrey Epstein was nice to waitresses, maybe. I don't know. What if we found that Epstein was a big tipper? <laughs> and he never complained and he never sent his food back. You know, as Ian Coulter noted, Hitler didn't smoke. Like, everybody's got a thing that's nice about them. And I'm, it's nice that Bill Gates wants to cure infectious diseases, and then somehow that will also bring the population of the planet down. There, He wants to do that. I get it. There's too many people. I'm in L.A. There's too much traffic. I get it. I'm with him. But if you look in his eyes, in his dome, he's got some other things going on. Let me tell you, fucking, thank God I don't have a billion dollars. Thank God I don't have a billion dollars. I'd be fucking, I mean, I if I were him mm -hmm. right now, I would be fucking, I would be doing some much wilder shit than he is. You just got to watch him. You got to watch Bezos. You got to watch these people. You know, if you if you need, go get a potato and put a Marlboro Light in its mouth and watch that and then press play on your phone. 